Well, the world's largest producer of ethanol has just received $76 million to get cellulosic ethanol into the commercial marketplace. In addition to corn-based fuel, Poet is producing ethanol from corn cobs and switchgrass. About a year ago, the Department of Energy gave Poet a down payment of $4 million. The $76 million makes up the balance of the federal funding package. Poet says some of the money will be used to transform their current plant in Emmitsburg, Iowa, into a facility that can produce fuel from both grain and cellulose. The project, dubbed Project Liberty, is expected to be online by 2011. Research continues at the University of Tennessee on the use of switchgrass for fuel, but the crop also has other potential uses, such as forage for cattle. In this report, provided by the UT Institute of Agriculture, Chuck Denny says switchgrass is nutritious for livestock and environmentally friendly. Thick stands of switchgrass grow along the perimeter of this experimental field at UT's Ag Research Center in Gibson County. Previously, researchers pretty much thought of switchgrass only for possible biofuels. But if it grows in the ground and it's nutritious, it's also feed for livestock. So a producer may have, you know, 30 or 50 or 100 acres of switchgrass, maybe going for biofuels, but take a portion of that and use it as a hay crop for his, for his cattle. UT Forage Specialist Dr. Gary Bates says he likes switchgrass as hay because it grows well in difficult conditions. This plant has a really deep root system. It's a, uh, physiologically, it has a photosynthetic pathway that makes it much more efficient with its water use. And so we have the chance to grow something uh, with you know, limited rainfall and still get pretty good production off of it. Producer Tim Brannan is growing 15 acres of switchgrass on his Henry County farm as part of UT's research efforts. And he likes the crop's versatility. We're finding out if you do cut switchgrass at an early stage, uh, the protein content can get up there equal to say fescue if it's cut at the proper stage. And then you can still come along and get a biomass crop harvest later in the year. UT experts also believe switchgrass is easy on the air we breathe and puts very little carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. They're doing research statewide to measure how switchgrass keeps CO2 in the soil, which impacts possible global warming. UT's Dr. Don Tyler is monitoring carbon levels at certain soil depths with switchgrass in 10 Tennessee counties. He says fossil energy sources such as coal or oil increase CO2 and other greenhouse gases. But switchgrass has no additive effect. It uses CO2 as it grows and then puts the same amount or less back into the atmosphere. Whereas switchgrass being a perennial, meaning it grows from one year to the next, a lot of the roots do not die. They're like tree roots, they stay in the ground and this is a major source of potentially storing carbon below ground. Tyler says this research could go on for a decade. Meantime, researchers and more Tennessee farmers will be growing switchgrass, a crop that can be fuel, forage, and a friend to Mother Earth. This is Chuck Denny reporting.